Thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me here today for the release of the action plan. I would like to acknowledge media and also uh, my colleagues from the legislature, Ben Jessam and uh, Denise peterson Rafuse, who have joined us. Thank you for your interest. The future success and prosperity of our province depends on our young people. The students in our schools today will be the leaders, the entrepreneurs, the innovators, and the skilled workers of tomorrow. We need to provide them with opportunities to acquire the skill set and the knowledge base necessary for them to be successful in society and to ensure that Nova Scotia has a bright future that includes them right here at home. In October 2013, I received a comprehensive review of our education system from the Minister's panel. They had heard from more than 19,000 Nova Scotians about what is right with our system and what needs to be improved. I want to thank the panel members and those Nova Scotians who cared enough about our students to take the time to respond. Their input is making a difference. In addition to the report from the panel, this action plan is driven by data from student assessments that show a growing trend and a disturbing trend. Students in Nova Scotia are falling behind those in other provinces. Test results show that our students are not performing well in math and literacy. Our students are as bright and as capable as those in other provinces. Our challenge and our collective responsibility is to take the necessary steps to reverse that trend. Today I am bringing forward an action plan called the three R's, renew, refocus, rebuild. Including the three R's in the title is deliberate and in no way suggests that we are replacing the traditional three R's of reading, writing, and arithmetic. In fact, the title and the actions in the plan demonstrate the importance of our commitment to those three R's, and you will see references to them throughout the document. The plan identifies four pillars necessary to build and support a strong, vibrant public education system. Actions around each of those four pillars will focus on structure, curriculum, learning environment, and quality teaching and leadership. Let me highlight a few of those actions. Under structure, all school boards will participate in an audit conducted by the Office of the Auditor General to examine the governance and committee structure of elected school boards, uh, to review the management structure of senior staff no, known as central office, the efficiencies in the operations of key functions of the board such as payroll, purchasing, transportation, and finance, and the effectiveness of school boards in their implementation and the delivery of Department of Education initiatives. The Department of Education itself will restructure and within the department, we will have divisions more closely aligned to the directions in the action plan. And we will review efficiencies and effectiveness within the department. We will establish a center of excellence within the department to focus on student achievement, research, quality teaching, and leadership. We will establish a minister's forum for teaching excellence to focus on professional development, networking, and supports for our teachers. Schools and classrooms need to lead the way as places of tolerance, respect, and personal responsibility where students feel safe. We need to accept differences, celebrate diversity, and treat our peers, our teachers, and our parents with mutual respect. We need to create a positive learning environment where all students are engaged and accountable, and where positive student behavior is expected and disrespectful behavior is not tolerated. Under the pillar of curriculum, we'll be focusing on the essential learning outcomes, and these, there will be essential learning outcomes identified 
in the curriculum from grades primary to 12, and they will be streamlined accordingly. The focus in grade three, P to three, will be on math and literacy, with increased instructional time for both. Enhanced assessments in both pre and post tests delivered by classroom teachers, and a closer monitoring of student performance on those tests to identify concerns and provide interventions as appropriate. In grades four to eight, the focus will be on teaching reading, writing, and speaking across the subject areas so students can develop stronger communication skills. This focus will include increased instruction on spelling, punctuation, and sentence structure. More opportunities in grades four to eight will be provided for hands-on learning, for innovation, and problem solving. Personal development education such as citizenship, service learning, leadership, volunteerism, and personal financial management will be incorporated into existing curriculum. In grades nine to 12, the focus will be on improving the state of readiness for our students as they prepare to graduate. Discovering Opportunities 9, which is in some of our schools now, will expand into more schools, as will Options and Opportunities, Skilled Trades, and Co-op Education. Entrepreneurship will be added to the courses eligible for Challenge for Credit and or Independent Study. A mandatory course in Citizenship will be developed for Grade 10. There will be an increase in the instructional time for academic math 11, from one semester as it currently is to two semesters. And by 2020, the number of math courses required for graduation will be increased from two to three. In addition, the class sizes for academic math 10 and academic math 11 will be capped at 24. Under the third pillar of learning environment, our commitment to all students is to develop and deliver a needs-based model of services and programs to support inclusive education. This must include parent participation and input. It must include opportunities for academic enrichment. It must include flexible programming using a variety of strategies supports and settings, including co-teaching, large and small group instruction, and one-on-one -on -one interventions, all designed to be the appropriate programming in the appropriate setting for all students. Pillar four speaks to quality teaching and leadership. We will create a framework for teaching standards. We will work with the universities who offer Bachelor of Education programs to ensure that they are aware of the standards for teaching that we expect our teachers to have. We will align the requirements for teacher certification to those new teaching standards. We will design a performance management system and provide professional development for teachers and administrators based on those teaching standards. We will provide induction programs that will assist new teachers as they enter the profession in our schools, and we will launch a teacher recruitment campaign to attract more African Nova Scotian, Mi'kmaq, and Acadian teachers. We are making a commitment to Nova Scotians, and we need to be held accountable. To achieve that accountability, the Department of Education is committed to producing an annual report which tracks our progress on actions in this plan. Our government has made public education a priority and our work began immediately upon election. We started with a commitment to reinvest $65 million back into the public education system. We have capped class sizes in primary grade one and grade two at 20 students and at grade three at 25 students. We have expanded Schools Plus into four additional sites and have just announced four more new early years centers. These programs provide services and supports to our youngest and their families prior to entering the public school system. 
We are eliminating the wait list for children who have been diagnosed with a developmental delay by recruiting and hiring more early childhood interventionists. We have made changes to the student report card to ensure that those reports are meaningful to parents and that they give parents an understanding and a better understanding of their child's progress and their levels of achievement. And we have expanded the skilled trade centers to sites within each board. The action plan before you is a roadmap to the future. It will require our partners in education, business and other government departments to work together towards a common goal. It will require students working hard to reach their full potential and to embrace the learning opportunities before them. It will require parents and families to participate in their child's education by supporting their child and by engaging with teachers to provide the best learning environment possible. We are fortunate to have a team of professional and dedicated teachers who, are, who continue to make a lasting and positive impact on countless lives in our schools every day. Our success with the implementation of the actions in this plan is directly related to their professionalism and their dedication, and I am confident that we will have both. As the plan evolves, be assured that there is, if there is a new idea to enhance the plan, we will consider it. If there is something that is not achieving the expected outcomes, we will change it. Together, we will renew, rebuild, and refocus our education system so that young minds can be challenged and our students will be better prepared for the opportunities that await them. Nova Scotia's future depends on healthy, well-educated, and socially responsible citizens. This plan is aggressive. It's also achievable. Thank you. Minister, Questions? Minister,